Hello, Mavic traders, and welcome out to your daily currency recap. This is Ankit here, and I'll be breaking down today's market price action. It's a Tuesday, August 20th. Let's get into it. As always, we'll be breaking down today's market price action by taking a look at broader market analysis. Then we'll take a look at currency baskets, any major reports, and then we'll take a look at some possible setups ahead. And let's get into it. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80 percent of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. As we jump into the market analysis, let's just jump right into the headlines here today. And again, we are seeing the market sort of stalling or taking a pause at that resistance level that we had discussed. So we had seen this remarkable rally, you know, consecutive eight day gains that uh, finally coming to an end. So the big question is, where do we go from here? We'll take a look at the charts. Um, as far as the sentiment goes, even though we took a little pause today, it was nothing major. Like market sentiment really hasn't changed on this. As we uh, take a look at the percentage change, then you can see that we are seeing, uh, you know, a continuation of uh, Kiwi doing really well here, 0.31%. Um, so you can see that there's a bit of a divergence that's taking place here between the dollar and the yen. Remember, that was a big mover just two weeks ago. And this is something we got to take a look at it because right now dollar is showing uh, ultra bearishness. And, and again, this is where yen likely to gain off of that. Um, we had Swiss franc did well, you know, even though it was a small pullback in the markets today, uh, the Swiss franc, which is again, a defensive currency is doing well today. Outside of that, you can see that Canadian dollar did pull back. They had this, um, the CPI report today, and then that was also weaker, uh, than we expected. So again, here we go, another chance for Bank of Canada to cut rates. So outside of that, you can see that. Aussie took a little break, so there's a bit of a divergence taking place between Aussie and Kiwi. There's a divergence taking place between Euro and Swiss franc, and there's a divergence taking place between the yen and the dollar. So uh, quite a bit to uh, look into. Now, if we take a look at the numbers here, as you can see that even though uh, the, the, the markets uh, did pull back, it was a very slight pullback, only 0.20%. Markets, again, has gone up close to 10% in just the last two weeks. So that's a that's a remarkable run, and this is a very shallow uh, little pause here, a little pullback. Same thing in the world stock index, down zero point three three percent. Crypto, I'm, I'm surprised that crypto is not taking part in any of that rally that we saw uh, in the last few days. Gold again hitting new highs, and here we are. Oil sort of struggling here, so uh, sort of an extension of what we have been seeing. Uh, gold has been continued to outperform here. So the slight pullback in the equities was the only change here today. Now, in the crypto world, you can see that it's just not a pretty picture. Remember, this this is the time where crypto should have done really well, and they're not. Litecoin being the down the most, Ethereum down. Again, this is why I don't really love the cryptocurrency here. Not the best price action that you're looking for. Now, if you take a look at the market outlook, where are we? We are at plus two. And if you take a look at the chart here, this is what you got to take a look at. This is the all-time highs that we, we had uh, put uh, before we turned lower. You can see that this is a remarkable rally, almost getting into the resistance level. So after that big run, getting a little pause here, but remember this pause is, is not an indicative of, uh, of a pullback here. It's just showing that maybe it's just high here. So tomorrow, again, we can still come and pull higher. We have no idea, but I think we are likely to struggle or stall around the resistance. You know, we need another catalyst for market to break out of it. And that's something we'll find out in the next uh, coming coming weeks ahead. So that's that's what we have going on here. As far as the news event goes, uh, we don't have a whole lot against CPI today. As you can see, that number were below expectation. So Canadian dollar, I think like it uh, stay stay weaker uh, over here. Now, we have some data coming out. I mean, tomorrow we have the FOMC meeting minutes. Um, you know, we have the uh, the services, PMI, all these numbers coming out on Thursday. And then, um, you know, we have retail sales. And most importantly, we have the Jackson Hole Symposium that everyone is kind of paying attention to. But that's not until little Friday. So until then, I think we'll probably continue to just stay uh, on this path. 
market likely to coast over here. Nothing too major, I think, until until we start to get some data on Thursday and most likely on Friday. Now, let's just jump into our currency analysis and take a look at where the velocity score is, and we'll take a look at some possible trades. Now, taking a look at velocity score, you can see that right now, CAD and the dollar, they are the ones showing the most weakness. And again, this is uh, whenever you have something in minus three, you know, this is where uh, we're getting a one sided move on these currencies. So they're extremely bearish here. No, no bounce whatsoever. And that's just not a great sign, uh, especially if you're looking for any reversals. Again, that's where, um, you know, there's no indication of a reversal here. Price is likely to continue on until we get that, you know, a, a change in that candlestick. So the the CAD and the dollar sit in the same path. Uh, Swiss franc uh, turning out to be positive here. Kiwi, you know, Kiwi something has done really well. We should take a look at it as a counterpart against the Aussie. There's a nice divergence that's taking place here. So in the shorter term, velocity did pull back on the Aussie pound euro. But if you take a look at the uh, the trend score, you know, the Aussie is in an uptrend. Kiwi's in an uptrend. Uh, pound had a massive rally. So. Uh, just a short term, short pullback here, but I think we got to continue looking at the daily chart and see where's the next big move. So let's just jump into the possible trades ahead and take a look at it. Do you want to be a professional trader? Maverick Currencies is the oldest US-based Forex and crypto prop trading company that will pay you for trading with our capital. Trade our capital and keep 70 to 80% of the profits. We are looking for traders just like you that are hardworking and motivated. Click the apply link on the top right of this video to see if you have what it takes. That link takes you to a four minute video that explains the trader position available and you read a list of FAQs that answer pretty much all the basic questions you have at this point. After watching the video and reading the FAQs, if you're interested, fill out an application, then you'll watch the full length recruiting video and then schedule an interview with one of our traders. Are you our next trader? So now looking at the possible trades, let's just start with, you know, here, here we are with the equity markets. Now, let me just show you how of an extreme move that we're seeing in the dollar here. And I'm just going to switch into a four hour chart since we're looking at velocity here. So here we are on a four hour chart. You can see that this thing is just putting another one red candle after another. This is what I call like the uh, the ultra bearish price action one sided move where there's just no bounce. So you just have to get in it. And again, you can see that there's a big move over here. We pause a little bit here, pause a little bit here, and then look at that big extension down here. And look at the RSI, it looks oversold. Uh, so everything is sort of pointing out to the downside. Now, if you go on the daily chart, like why are we getting this move? You know, <laughs> is, 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 uh, is this something uh, that's all based on a news event or is something underneath? I think this is something that's outside of the news. Again, this is the expectation. Maybe that, you know, we have the markets that are likely to cut rates again. There's just a lot that's just sort of taking place over here on its own without a, a driver of a news event here. You can see that there was a major break off that support level um, on the daily chart. And then here we are getting that bearishness. Uh, what I find interesting is that if you take a look at the uh, bond markets, well, bond markets are not doing the uh, what exactly we're seeing in the dollar here. So here's the bond market. You can see that this thing uh, did, did uh, pull uh, lower and then pretty much gone sideways since then. Well, on the other hand, if you take it to go to the dollar, you know, dollar is just ripping lower. So there's there's a bit of a divergence that, that I'm noticing between the bond market and what's happening with the USD. So this probably be more in line with the risk on and risk off theme, because if you take a look at the Aussie and the Kiwi, like here we are in the Aussie for our the Kiwi four hour chart, you can see that this thing is just ripping higher. Let's uh, let's let's get rid of the uh, lines over here. This thing is very bullish. And, and you can see that every little candle just keep pushing higher and higher. So one sided move, very low volatility. Um, Aussie's kind of moving the same way, although it seems like it's taking a little pause here. Again, momentum is sort of slowing down here. Uh, the Canadian dollar, again, stays weak as well, just along the side of the USD. It looks very similar, both of them. So again, uh, based on the candlesticks today, you can see that either they're closing at the highs of the day or the lows of the day. And that's when you know that there's likely to have that, uh, you know, sort of a extension of that. Now, most importantly, let's take a look at what's happening with the yen and this is franc. Now, this is the Japanese yen. 
And you can see that on the daily chart, this thing still looks like a bull pullback to me. I mean, this thing has not really broken lower. Remember, there was a massive move that took place here. Now it's just facing here. So can't really say that this is ready to break out yet. There, Here's the four hour chart. This thing is still has some areas to clear, but again, uh, not the, uh, you know, compared to the dollar, uh, this, this thing is holding way better. Now, Swiss Franc, on the other hand, you can see that this thing also is a safe uh, haven currency doing very similar to what the dollar, what the yen is doing. So a clear divergence here. So you can take a look at some of the uh, currency pairs like dollar, uh, dollar Swiss Franc. Let's take a look at that one. You can see that just rolled all the way down. You remember that big rally that we had? And it's all the way down. And most of that weakness is just coming in um, since last uh, last Thursday. And here we are getting oversold region. So even though we are getting this oversold re uh, reading, this is where you can continue going lower uh, before you can find a bottom here. So if you look at the chart, we are close to the lows of the day. So this is likely to continue in the next 24 hours until it really put a reversal candle. Now, it's, uh, dollar yen is looking very similar. You can see that this thing is also, uh, you know, we went sideways for a bit and here we are breaking lower. So the question is, you know, is this likely to, you know, fall back below that 4142? Well, that's what the chart is suggesting right now. So for our chart again, right now, you can see a little bear rally over here and we just broke lower, uh, lower over here. So I like the the uh, further extension in the dollar Swiss franc and the dollar yen. And we can also take a look at currency pairs like Kiwi dollar. You can I mean, look at that move here for our chart, just consistently moving higher. This was a big rate cut. We had surprise rate cut from, from New Zealand and here we are. So at this point, I know I always get this question. Uh, either you enjoyed that move and you're out of the move or you're waiting to get in. And this is a tough one. When we get this big one-sided move, you can see that this is, has not even based uh, a lot here. This thing only based over here. Now we just look extended. So a lot of the charts that you look at right now, they will look extended. Here we are, Aussie dollar. Despite Aussie being weak, you can see on the currency basket, uh, this thing is just making a base here. So again, no end in sight to this moves here until we can really put a, a, a reversal candle of the daily chart, we'll probably likely continue further. So there's decent setups. There's decent setups everywhere. Now the question is that what time frame do I get it on and how long I hold that trade for? Remember in the by uh, Wednesday, tomorrow, we have the FOMC meeting minutes. Thursday, we have some data. Friday, we have Jackson Hole Symposium. So there's still uh, the catalyst that we have in the market. But uh, for now, if your markets look extended, this is, again, a great time to look for some some bases to get into. The, again, on the 4-hour chart, you can see that these are shallow bases, but these are the times where you want to get into. So in conclusion, uh, again, equity likely to stall at this resistance level, but at the same time, remember, the market is really strong. So we might just go back and forth here. I don't think it's going to break the resistance until it really has a good catalyst. But again, I think this is where the big move is likely already happened. Now we just maybe go in a little consolidation phase. In currencies, uh, continuation is uh, continuing on. So remember how we got this um, sort of a pause on that rally today in the equities? We haven't seen a pause in the currencies. Dollar moving the same way. Yen, yen is moving the same way. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the currencies are moving the same way. So we want to continue moving that until we get that uh, change in the daily candle. So pay attention to relative strength weakness. If you're looking for news events, again, uh, later part of this week, especially Friday, I think it will be very important. Thanks for joining here. We'll see you next update. Happy trading.